Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to take a look at a very useful image adjustment, which is the Shadow Highlight Adjustment. And this is good because it allows us to independently adjust the shadowy areas of an image, lightening them up, and preserve highlights so they don't get overexposed. Now, you could do a lot of these adjustments inside the Camera Raw dialog box if you're shooting raw to begin with. But let's take a look at some images that have already been processed to TIFF or JPEG and see how to repair them. So I have a picture here, and it suffers from some fairly typical problems, which is we took it on a bright day, and we decided to adjust how we were exposing. If I were to expose for the subject, in this case the bike, it would be perfectly exposed, but the sky would be all blown out. If I exposed for the sky, then you see what happened here. The bike is thrown a little bit into shadows, but we could fix this. You'll notice that the shadows and highlight adjustment is not available as an adjustments layer. In fact, it's not a non-destructive adjustment, but there's a cool way around this. See, if you choose image adjustments, shadows and highlights, it's gonna make the change, but it's gonna be permanent and you won't have a way to undo that or tweak it. Let's go ahead and step back one time, or one undo we're allowed. And instead, let's go ahead and modify this by right-clicking and converting it to a smart object. Now, we've talked about smart objects before. The important thing to remember here is that a smart object tucks a copy of the image inside of the layer. So you can apply adjustments to it, filters mainly, and then modify it even after the fact. Well, the cool thing here that a lot of people don't realize is that the shadow highlights adjustment isn't actually at image adjustments. Notice when we choose image adjustments, everything is grayed out except for shadows and highlights. That's because of a fluke, shadows and highlights actually uses a filter engine as opposed to the adjustments engine, so we can apply it like a smart filter. There we go. And it comes up. Now, by default, you have two simple sliders, an amount, which goes after the shadows, and a highlights that protects the brighter areas in the image. Those are fine, but you bought Photoshop for a reason, and that was to get professional results. To do that, simply click the Show More Options button, and it instantly gets a lot harder. Well, actually it doesn't. It just has more control. So what we're dealing with here first is our shadows. So we'll go ahead and reset. Option click or alt click, the Cancel button becomes Reset. And what we want to do is define what's a shadow. So tonal width affects what is treated as a shadow, whether it's the darkest 10%, the darkest 55%, etc. cetera. You see, we can really isolate that adjustment. I'm going to say the darkest 70% should be treated as a shadow, but tweak the radius here so it has a little bit more fall off. And then as we adjust the amount, you'll see that those areas brighten up considerably. That did a nice job. I'm not happy though that this is getting a little bit brighter, so let's back off that width slider so that part on the dock is not as affected. There we go. That did a good job. Next, we can go after highlights, and those are the brightest areas inside the image. So if we pull this down, it actually darkens things down. Let's define the brightest 25% as being a highlight. This way, things like the clouds and the metal highlights in the handlebars are preserved, but other areas are not affected. And you see there it's affecting the clouds, but everything else remains untouched. Lastly, we have the ability to go after individual color correction. This is important. When you start to adjust the shadowy areas, you're likely going to lose some saturation as you brighten them up. So it's important that you put saturation and contrast back in, and that's why it's built right into this filter. We can go ahead and put a little bit of color correction in so it boosts the color in those shadowy areas and play with contrast so it doesn't look washed out. See there, it's affecting the midtones. If it's a low value, the image goes very flat. But if we pop that up a little bit, we get some nice contrast in those midtones so we don't lose details. And when you're satisfied, you can click OK, and there you have it. Now, the cool thing is, is this is a actual smart filter. So if you change your mind, you can just double click on it and actually modify the value. So we can go ahead and pull those highlights down a little bit and click OK and it updates even after closing and reopening the document. So that's really the advantage of using this on a smart object instead of just applying it to the photo by itself. 
If you need to mask any areas, you could. There's a mask attached, but all in all, that did a very effective job. Now let's take a look at one more photo that could also benefit. We'll right click and convert this to a smart object and we'll call this warning sign. And let's go ahead and toss on that shadows and highlights adjustment. There we go. I'm going to define the darkest 65% or so as being a shadow. Let's adjust the tonal width there. There we go. And pull the amount down so it's not as intense. That's looking pretty good. I do want to pull the highlights down though so the sky doesn't get so blown out. And then we'll pop the color correction here so it's much more saturated and put a little bit of contrast back in and click OK. If you want to see the before and after, simply click the eyeball icon and you can toggle to see your results. Now it does take a second to process because it's a fairly intense filter. So there you have it, shadow highlights command being used on just two images. You'll find this incredibly useful for lots of different types of photos. It's going to go ahead and make it easier to go after those shadowy areas and lift them up. If you are shooting camera raw, be sure to make these adjustments before you develop the photo right inside the camera raw dialog box. But for purposes here of working with a TIFF or a JPEG, this is a very flexible command that does get the job done. My name is Rich Harrington. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. If you do enjoy the show, please go ahead and head over to Adobe TV or iTunes and post a review for us. That's very helpful and helps other people find out about the show. And if you're looking for cool resources, check out our blog, rastervector.com. Thanks again.